Hi guys, my name is Ava. My name is David. And today we're going to be playing the game Asteroids. Asteroids is an arcade game that was created in 1979 by Lyle Rains and Ed Logg. It's an Atari game, which is part of the golden age of video games. It's a game set in space with a single ship that's goal is to destroy all surrounding asteroids without getting destroyed yourself. If your ship is destroyed, you have three lives until the game's yeah, over. Each asteroid is introduced in its large rock form. When hit with a laser, it will split into two smaller chunks, and those two will split into two even smaller rocks, which will disappear upon being hit. So it takes a total of seven hits to destroy one big asteroid. The controls are simple. On a computer, you use the arrow keys to move forward and rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. Spacebar is used to shoot, and your lasers have a limited distance and will fizzle out after traveling too far. Also, if you hit shift, you'll do this little teleportation thing that's super useful in a pinch. Similar to the physics in space, there is no stopping, so once you have momentum in a given direction, you will keep going that way and will gradually slow down. If you go off the limits of the screen, you will appear again on the opposite end. In a way, this makes for an infinite playing field as it never ends, it will just loop. If you start to go really fast, this mechanic can be a little disorienting, and it takes some skill to be able to keep track of your ship. As your score progresses, so does the difficulty level, and new elements are introduced to make the game more challenging, such as an enemy ship that shoots you. After clearing the first big set of asteroids on your screen, a new wave of asteroids will commence. The more waves you clear, the more asteroids are introduced in each subsequent wave. Which brings us to our main talking point, and that's that Asteroids is a game that is played in waves. So waves are a kind of segmentation in which a game is broken up by. There is an initial challenge introduced to the player, and the next set won't commence until the previous challenge has been cleared. And often with waves, you will see the difficulty level increase with each new wave. And waves are an example of a challenge segmentation. There are three forms of segmentation. Temporal segmentation, spatial segmentation, and challenge segmentation, which were all described in week three's readings, Rounds, Levels, and Waves, The Early Evolution of Gameplay Segmentation by Zagel et al. When going over every type of segmentation, temporal segmentation is described as the most traditional form. Temporal segmentation limits, synchronizes, and or coordinates player activity over time and regulates who plays when and the time limit for the gameplay. Next, spatial segmentation, which breaks the game's virtual space into sublocations that are commonly used through the design of levels and spatial checkpoints players have to complete. Lastly, Zagel et al. discusses challenge segmentation, which as we see through Asteroids, presents the player with a sequence of self-contained challenges that can present themselves in several forms, such as puzzles, waves, or even boss challenges. The importance of segmentation in video games is that it is used to manage and regulate the development of the gameplay experience through the design of a game. So it essentially gives a game its structure and dictates what a player is to expect as they progress through the game. Personally, I can see how these types of segmentations were especially important with older games like Asteroids, since there were a lot of limitations with the technology, forcing the game itself to be honestly quite simple. If you provide players with a clear outline of the challenges they can expect, and the player knows it's going to keep ramping up as they progress, it can create a pretty fun gameplay experience. Like, I'm trying to imagine you're in an arcade in the 80s on your last life, about to break the high score. You barely made it through the last wave of asteroids, and the next one is only going to be more difficult. You have an audience behind you hyping you up, and you just gotta play through this next huge wave. Really forces you to bring your A game, and honestly sounds like a lot of fun. Which brings us to talking about the strategy you can use to tackle a game like Asteroids. We tried several different ways of playing the game through the waves and found that moving as little as possible provided the best results. This avoids complications of maneuvering through the asteroid field and accidentally getting hit and destroyed. This is what happens if you don't do that. Also, you kind of have to predict the trajectory of the asteroids when firing as the missile speed of your laser is not very fast. So if you shoot where the asteroid is, it's going to be long gone by the time your laser actually gets there. So that can be annoying. Also, try not to break the big asteroids until you have cleaned up as many of the little pieces as you can. 
because the more small, fast-moving asteroids you have, the more chaotic the field of play becomes. Overall, Asteroids is a straightforward game to understand, but is a really hard game to master based on our playthrough experience. Now, I want to talk about games that have been derived from Asteroids. I'd never actually played Asteroids prior to this project, but it felt so familiar to me because there's so many games that were sort of built off the backbone of Asteroids. And one of the most memorable ones for me is a game called Bubble Trouble. Bubble Trouble is a game that I used to play as a kid with my friends and we'd either go to each other's house or we'd even go to the library and play it there because you would just play it online on a website like Miniclip. And the concept of Bubble Trouble is honestly quite similar to Asteroids. There are these bubbles that appear on your screen and you, this little alien guy, has to sort of shoot and pop the bubbles. And when you pop the big bubbles, they will burst into smaller bubbles. And there's a little bit more layers to the game and there's actually levels as well. So you see the introduction of spatial as well as challenge segmentation in the same game, which is honestly pretty cool. That's enough rambling for me. On that note though, we wanted to leave the class with a few questions. Um, the first one being, do you feel like Asteroids was ahead of its time, was it behind its time, perfectly in line with its time, and why? And also, can you think of other games that use the segmentation examples we described? Let us know what you think of. Last class, we talked about the space race and sort of the influence it had on the inception of video games. Do you feel like Asteroids helped propel the Western world forward with the space race? Can a video game be considered a landmark in this competition between nations trying to get to space? Our final question is, how do you think playing a game like this made players feel when it was first released in 1979? Was it revolutionary for the entertainment industry? Thank you all so much for listening, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation on Asteroids.